When it comes to the best eras in NBA history, for the longest time the 1990s was regarded as the best era of all time. But now in the 2020s, a lot of younger fans are pushing back on the narrative since the 1990s were actually overrated and the current NBA is far superior. Futures now, old man. Now, me myself being a 90s defender, I find that notion to be absolutely ludicrous. As comparing these two eras, in my view, it's not even close. And first up, looking at reason number one, why the 90s was superior. It's pretty simple. The players back then loved basketball and playing for the fans as often as possible. And at first glance, you might say, why does that matter why one era is better than the other? Well, glad you asked that. So far in the 2020s, this era has been the era of entitlement. A superstar player wants to sit out a game, yeah, go ahead and do so. Primetime matchup, playing, that's optional. And look at this era so far. Here's some stats. When it comes to players year by year, playing every game possible, in 2020, five players did that. 21, 9, 22, 5, and 23, 10. Over the past four years, only 29 players have played every game in a single season, and only twice has an all-star player accomplished that, that being Nikola Jokic both times. Now compare that to the first four years of the 1990s. You're about to have your mind blown. 1990, 54 players played all 82 games, including 10 all-stars. 91, 45 players. 92, 50, and 93, 41. Those four years in the 1990s, the first four years of the decade, a total of 190 players and 32 All-Stars played all 82 games. And look, when it comes to younger NBA fans, what are we told all the time? Today's players, much better shape, better training, better conditioning, nutrition, etc., etc. Well, if that's the case, why could players back in the day play every game, but guys in this era simply can't do it? Man up with gold bond. Now, looking at reason number two where the 90s was superior, with the fact scoring nowadays is a joke and it's vastly inflated. I mean, back in the day, even in the 2010s, early 2010s, if you saw a guy like Kobe score 35, maybe 40 points, you were like, damn, this guy was on fire, he was feeling it, had a great game. And if a guy like Jordan scored 50, by far the best game of the night, best game of the week, and quite possibly the best game of the month. Nowadays in the NBA, scoring 30, 40, even 50 points isn't really that impressive or noteworthy. And like I've said numerous times, in today's league, 40 is the new 30. And doing a side-by-side -side comparison, the first four years of the 2020s versus the first four years of the 90s, in the 2020s era, 40-point games, well over 700. 50-point games, barely over 100, and 60-point games, 19. Compare that to the early 90s. 40-point games, under 300. 50-point games, 31, and 64. When it comes to big-time scoring performances, when guys are getting 50, 60 points routinely, the importance of those games is diminished and watered down. Not impressed by your performance. And one thing I hear all the time is that today's league, quote unquote, has more talent and more skilled players. And look, there are talented guys, highly skilled players, not denying that. But looking at the scoring boom of this era, the inflated stats of this era, nowadays bad players look like good players, good players look like great players, and very good players look like all time great talents. Now, looking past the scoring boom, reason number three is variation of playstyle from team to team. Nowadays in 2024, turn on any game, any team, you're guaranteed a couple of things. At least 35 threes, tons of layups, and superstar players settling for jump shots. Nowadays, virtually every team is a cookie cutter version of the Golden State Warriors. And here's the problem, you're not the Golden State Warriors. 
Back then in the 90s, each team, even each conference, had its own unique style and brand of basketball. Of course, the Bulls with Jordan, the triangle offense, Stockton Malone, the pick and roll, Shaq and Penny, a dynamic two-man game, also could run the break, the New York Knicks, grinded out basketball, tough physical games, the run TMC Warriors, run and gun, high-paced games, the Rockets with Akeem Olajuwon, operated through the block, and team like Cleveland had Mark Price, Brad Doherty, a great two-man game, was also dominant in transition. Looking at those teams, those play styles, compared to today's league, there is much more variety. So far in the 2020s, the bad teams, mediocre teams, even the really good teams, are a bad copy of the Golden State Warriors. And what teams do? They kind of conform to the idea they have to shoot 43s per game and live with that. When back in the day, those unique teams, they play to their own strengths that their roster possessed. I mean, for example, look at the Memphis Grizzlies. Across the board, their shooting splits are awful. From the field, three, even the line. But still, take the fifth most threes in the game, despite being dead last in percentage. That right there is clear-cut proof. Nowadays in the NBA, it's all about conformity. One of us, Google Gobble, yeah, one of us. We <laughs> accept that one, one of us. Google Gobble, one of us. We accept that one of us. And looking at some superstar players like a Jason Tatum, this guy every single night chucks up threes like a six foot nine Steph Curry. When in reality, him getting to the basket when he wants to is virtually unstoppable. But like a lot of superstar players, falls in love with the three and stops driving. That right there in a nutshell, my biggest pet peeve with the current NBA. The superstar players, just teams in general, settle for threes so, so often. And building off that, we have reason number four. Teams in the 90s had an identity of a superstar player. What do I mean? The Bulls, they were Jordan's team. The Knicks, that was Ewing. The Hawks, Dominique. The Pacers, Reggie. Detroit, Isaiah. The Western Conference, Utah, that was Stockton Malone. Seattle, GP and Kemp. The Rockets, Hakeem. Portland, Clyde. San Antonio, David Robinson. Back in the 1990s, a superstar player, they had their team and their squad they went to battle with. And the idea they leave that team jump ship to a championship contender to build a super team, it was virtually unheard of and unimaginable. Now, unfortunately, today's era, it's all too normal. From guys like Kevin Durant to LeBron James. And if you want to talk about team, player, fan connection, nowadays most superstars don't really have a team that's theirs and then claim as their own. I mean, someone like Kawhi Leonard, is he really a Clipper, a Raptor, or a Spur? Not one of those teams can claim him as their guy. And when it comes to player empowerment, on one hand, it is great for the players to choose their team where they want to go and have their best chance to win a title. But on the other hand, players chaining teams so often so much for the fan experience, isn't the greatest. And like I said before, back in the day, we were a fan of a team, not a player. For today's league, you're more of a Kevin Durant fan, a Kawhi fan, than a Clippers fan or a Suns fan. And the last thing I do want to touch on is the overall idea of substance over style. And the final reason for the 1990s was far better than the 2020s. If you look at the 1990s, watch the highlights, even the full games. 20 years later, yes, there are flashy plays and highlights, some big time crossovers and dunks. But the majority of the time to play, it was quite methodical and player dribbling was done with a purpose. And looking at today's league, when they call it more skilled, more talented, what are they really talking about? Mainly shooting and dribbling. But here's my thing. Scoring the basketball is not that complicated. And if I have a guy in the 90s who can give you a jab step, one, two dribbles, get to the rim, and finish, that is far more impressive than the guy who takes 10 dribbles, 15 seconds, flops for an and one, and gets a bucket. Now look, technically speaking, which one is more visually appealing and more skilled? Probably guy number two. But then again, which one is more effective? 
When it comes to the 1990s, a lot of the players operated with a purpose when they dribbled or attacked the basket. And comparing to the modern NBA, someone like Kawhi Leonard, a perfect example of a 1990s type player. Skill-wise, Kawhi Leonard in the mold of a Michael Jordan. Very little dribbling, a 1-2 jab, pull up, fade away, gets a bucket. Now compare that to someone like Jordan Poole. Jordan Poole, at his best, has amazing highlights. But Kawhi Leonard, much more effective player and score. And the last thing I do want to say, when it comes to the face of the league in the 1990s, that of course was Michael Jordan. And under Jordan, the NBA reached amazing heights they haven't seen before or since. And because of that, myself and many fans think the 1990s was the best era of all time and far superior to the 2020s era. So, as always, thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.